slow to start with, but uh, they look really cool. So the oats with no sign are, are part of his company. Did a good job. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this probably wasn't even you, was it? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no. It was all me. Uh, I am not an oat breeder. By no means, I do not want to be an oat breeder. Uh, but we do license and again, track out for everything. So we license anything we can. And oats is a, uh, has a pretty big market in certain areas that we can't get into with triticale or forge wheat. So uh, we just said, fine, we'll go out. I'll try to find the best oat that fit our market. Just trying to uh, look for something that would kind of fit, fit the phenotype and the, you know, and the uh, adaptation. Honestly, I didn't remember even sent these to me. But, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure the conversation went, hey, I got a note. You want to look at it? Oh, yeah, we'll look at it. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's not going to be... Uh, I notice that when you, as you progress north, the forge type oats have very large leaves, a little uh, later maturing. Um, that's kind of a great thing to go to. When you look at the southern type of forage oats, they're going to have a little narrower leaf because they got a little faster um, and then put on grain. And that's really the market if I get high grain yield uh, and get crown rust on it. So, uh, you can pretty much hit a home run on the home market. So we're just trying to find, figure out where the placement is. We call it a winter oat, but really there's no true winter oat. There's just a, you can fall plant in Texas and Oklahoma, and even you go all the way across the southern states towards Florida and, and Georgia. You can actually plant oats fall planted there. Not, doesn't get enough cold to hurt them, so that's kind of what they call a winter oat. So we say winter oats. There's no such thing as a winter oats, but this is our winter oat, and uh, yeah, it looks great. That's all I got. <laughs> Any questions specifically for Reese on that, or? Yeah. The oats got a PGR as well. Okay. 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 So I'm surprised the haymaker. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the seed production field of haymaker is just like a half a mile that way, and they're not laying down very much at all. Okay. Yeah. So so and they were planted earlier, so they should have been laying down before these ones. So uh, and the plant stand over there, I believe I was targeting. 25 plants and here I believe I was targeting 25 plants as well actually I'd have to double check that but I'm surprised how much the haymakers laying down maybe we have too much fertility here maybe that's maybe it's a fertility issue Joe relative to that field too much in yeah. so yeah we did, we, we did two over there though right oh do you did two PGRs oh okay okay two PGRs to one and they're they're standing okay we did we did PGRs on the oats as well this year I forgot about that one <laughs> So, so, but it's a seed production for forage oats. So you know how that goes. It's going to be a big leafy biomass thing. And we don't need that for seed production. You, you want that for your animals. So these oats were the Cadillac. They were really slow, really late and really slow to come. And I'm like, oh, that's not going to look very good. And they actually look a lot better than I expected now uh, after not seeing them for a while. So maybe there's something there. We'll see. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, so I, I think you're going to, have you, you're going to do some forage cuts on both of those. Okay. Yep. Blair's got some cool stuff going on here, so I'll let him talk about it. I guess it's kind of like my little playground, eh? But, um, so I, these two barley plots right here, I did them after my boot stage cut. So taking uh, my boot stage cut on hybrid rye I, on May 28th, I planted these on June 2nd. And the Esma is a little bit ahead of the Durango there. It's uh, The Durango got planted into a little bit of a little more compacted area just from like uh backing up from the tractor there so it didn't really deal with that that much so it's um a little bit behind but they both look really good and then these uh three plots right here i got the some serafino um and arbor goats and forward sorghum planted so those were done after my uh my milk stage cut on hybrid rye and the the serafino was more of like a, a fun thing to see what kind of um growth I could get by the time um, I'm taking these cuts so just see like tonnage comparison compared to um, and quality overall just as a as a fun little fun little trial I guess but uh, this year I'll be taking the oats and the sorghum on, off at the same time this year last year I I uh, they were a month apart so this year I'm and 
there was double the tonnage on the the sorghum um which is to be expected right but it's i just i'm gonna cut them at the same time just to kind of give it more of a, a fair battle i guess so um we'll be taking the oats to kind of a, a soft dough stage and then we'll we'll chop them and then we'll we'll take the sorghum off at the same time there so it'll be a little wetter but that's okay and yeah the barley i, I sorry I, I planted i think i said it but planted to uh for the chance to take the green so um it's a late season plant just to see how far we can push things yeah we got we've got a few customers that are taking a boot stage hybrid fall rye off and then replanting to uh barley for grain and then doing a late green barley that maybe as close to the same yield potential but they got six tons or eight tons whatever whatever it was eight seven or eight tons of their hybrid rye of high quality forage so so a few people are trying that in this area any questions for mark see the Cadillac oats is that just a forage oat specifically or could you take it and use it as a, as a grain oat oh yeah yeah the can is gonna get you <laughs> And, okay, uh, so I know even in the U.S. we have a northern market that's got a, a big grain oat market for like Quaker Oats or something like that. These haven't been tested for that specific milling uh, components. Uh, forage only, that's, that's again, that's like our biggest, uh, in Tri-Cal Forage, I'm going to drive that home. Forage only, I don't care so much about the grain. Like, but if you buy a bunch of it, you tell me how it works. <laughs> You could probably have to sign some agreement saying you won't take it to grain harvest. I think there, I think that's part of the tri-cal agreement. <laughs> part of the forage agreement, yeah, yeah. But if we do some seed production like this, we're actually gonna put it. He's gonna do some forage testing out of it, and I think we're gonna put it through the combine, and we'll see. Because maybe there's an opportunity. We, we want to know what it yields for us to grow up for seed to hit a. Because maybe it doesn't yield very good. I don't know. So that dictates what the price has to be to make it work relative to the value to the customer using it for forage. So, yeah. Okay. Anyone else with some any, any last questions or are we just going to have a beer in the tent? <laughs> I'm having fun still. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oats and shelling, yeah. So, so we we had we've had oats on this field before on this this half a number of years ago, and we swath a lot, like we swath a lot of crop of cereals. And so, yeah, if you get a win like this and a ripe oat crop, yeah. So one we had a fall where we had two varieties of oats probably five years ago, and they were standing. And it was a rainy fall, and so we just kind of let them stand because we're like, well, we're not ready to harvest them. Or the combine had other stuff in front of it and the oats were just standing there and i think we lost 30 bushels on the ground pretty easily but the plot still yielded 220 bushels an acre so it uh they were phenomenal looking plots we never have replicated that yield uh this field the first year we had oats on it i think we did 180 average and then the, yeah, the fall of years were like 160 but we were oat on oat so that was our problem i think but the problem with seed production we do weird things as a seed grower sometimes so the oat on oat was because it was like oh the field is clean okay let's do it one more time <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah oats for, for production you want to get them through the swather before this happens when they're right 50 percent okay. okay well if there's no more questions we can uh, uh take off back to the tent and hang out a bit if you like or or uh take off so i really want to say i appreciate all of you uh coming to the tour sticking around i to tell you guys that left early uh, <laughs> uh, i'm not sure what you get other than a little bit of free information but uh, <laughs> uh yeah if you want to Give us a ring if you need some fall crop advice or you see something weird going on in the crops uh, that you got going right now. Uh, don't hesitate to fill us in. It's good to learn from all of them. We learn as much from our customers as we learn from people like Mike Harding. And I think he would say the same. So um, I really appreciate all of you coming today. Thank you.